the meeting to order and for the first time in a very long time in person. So excellent to see everyone, faces and more. <laughs> Lovely. All right, can we have the roll, please? Yes. Commissioner Sibley. Here. <clears throat> Commissioner Hardy's. Here. Commissioner Lane. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Goon. Here. Commissioner Jacoby. Thank you. Great, thanks. So we do have a quorum. Uh, next item on the agenda is the HPC minutes from May 5th. Um, we do have four of the members who were at that meeting present, so we are able to uh, ratify those minutes. Are there any commissioners that have any questions or comments on that meeting minute? And uh, Commissioner Jacoby, I just wanted to make sure that you were satisfied with the record uh, that was put on there for um, uh, the public comment. Right. Okay, with that, uh, I would entertain a motion, and I think for the ease of, can we do motions without having to do the mic dance? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so with that, I'd entertain a motion for approval. Motion for approval. Okay. Uh, moved by Commissioner Sibley. Second. Okay. Seconded by Commissioner Goon. Uh, all those in favor, uh, well, the way we're going to do this is just raise your hand so that the um, uh, video will capture votes. So all those in favor. All right. So it passes uh, f four in favor and two abstentions. Uh, next item is report from the chairperson, wherein I am no longer obligated to talk at length about how one logs on to the meeting and waits in the queue and so on and so forth. Uh, so all I have to report then is that uh, Commissioner Sibley and I did attend the city council meeting on the 17th of May, wherein um, the uh, mayor and the council did uh, proclaim May uh, Historic Preservation Month. So that was good to, that the uh, council was able to do that and just give a little more re public recognition um, to preservation uh, and archeological. Arche Mayor had a hog, maybe this is the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Archeology. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, communications from HPC staff liaison. So I, I don't have anything other than the, the agenda items. I don't know, Jennifer or Glenn, if you have any additional items to cover. Yeah. I nope. think we're good. Okay. Thanks. Right, uh, do, are there any questions from commissioners for staff that don't relate to things that are on the agenda? Have an update on any um, support from the city for advertising for the tours that we talked about. Yeah, I need I needed to get back to you, Rick, on that, Commissioner Jacoby. Um, I've been out a little bit in the month of May, so I uh, haven't had a chance to kind of follow up on that. But uh, certainly, yeah, let's chat either this week or next week about that. Um, and happy to kind of coordinate on that. I know uh, that uh, the museum is still hosting some upcoming walking tours this month, uh, if anybody's interested. Um, but yeah, certainly let's chat about the historic East Side tour and the potential for advertising for that. Oh, looks like you're off again. There we go, yeah. Um, I, I'll just let you know that um, I just took it upon myself to organize another tour, uh, just because the time is right. Now, if we can do it with city support of advertising, great, but it's gonna be uh, June 25th, Saturday morning uh, at 9 a.m. And uh, if, if not, we, I was thinking we probably will do another tour in the end of summer as well, and that one might work out better for advertising given the lead times we need for getting things in print and whatnot but I will be doing one in uh, June. Yeah, we'll see if we get something up on the city historic preservation 
web page, uh, obviously, since you're a commissioner, and uh, see what other options we have for getting the, getting the word out for the June 25th. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, great. All right, now we will move to uh, public invited to be heard. So this uh, is an opportunity for anyone in the audience who would like to speak uh, on a topic that is uh, not on the agenda. Um, you're welcome to come up and provide comment. Uh, please do start by stating your name and you do have uh, three minutes uh, after which this, uh, this thing's gonna buzz pretty good. There's a sign-up sheet out there that they should have probably handed to you, and then you'd know okay, what would, public's coming to speak. That, that would be fantastic. And you well, could prepare yourself. We, this is the first time uh, in two and a half years we're doing this, so we'll, uh, we'll, I think that's an excellent suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name's Sharon O'Leary, 534 Emory Street. Um, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for giving of your time and energy in his to the citizens of Longmont for historic preservation. When you go online and it lists all the different boards and they give a very brief description, if you want to apply for a board for uh, historic preservation, it says, considers matters relating to protecting, enhancing, and preserving properties of historic, geographic, or architectural significance in the city. Thank you. That's what you've got to do, so thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay, so quickly, um, and oh, and thank you for meeting in person, and, and I hope in the future uh, we're always meeting in person, but if not, if you could follow city council schedule, it's great, because I think thinking in silos is not as good as meeting in person. That's just my opinion. Um, first of all, my most concerning thing is the demolition ordinance. I first came to uh, Historic Preservation Commission February 2016. I mean, this is a long time waiting and nothing's happened and nothing's changed. So if, if you believe in preservation, I think you really need to address our demolition code because it's not in favor of preserving. So maybe you could put that on your work plan. Um, my second thing is um, a prime example was a house was demoed at 846 Emory. And it was demoed because it couldn't support a second floor. Well, guess what? The majority of homes in the historic east side neighborhood cannot support a second floor and that needs to be looked at why did that happen why was that even something to consider when demoing so this is what's going to happen and and what do you do as a preservation board when somebody oops demos a house an historic neighborhood is lost one home at a time stop the bleeding um three i I think it's important that we look at pushing forward on that conservation overlay zone for henna, which for 30 years preserved the neighborhood. It's pretty much intact, and if we don't move quickly, um, it, could, it won't look the same. And fourth, walking tours. I feel like there's systemic bias going on. So there's walking tours for Third Avenue and historic downtown and nothing for the east side, the oldest neighborhood. So what I would ask as a board that you contact um, the museum and suggest that they adopt or work with your board member who went and wrote his own walking tour so that our neighborhood people could get to understand it, understand the history of Longmont, and maybe open their minds to preservation. So because of systemic bias, they have not included us in this second round. So please work, be guardians. Um, Historic East Side has been guardians of our neighborhood, and we just want you to get on the bandwagon with us. Again, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Oh, great, thanks. Um, absent a sheet, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? Nope, all right. Thank you, we'll, we'll close the public hearing, or public invited to be heard, thank you. All right, on to new business which is an update on the Dickens Barn uh, Zlatan property. And I believe Planning Director Nimwigan, you have a report for us. I do, Mr. Chairman, and uh, yeah, welcome everybody to uh, our first, for me anyhow, our first in-person meeting. Um, and we have a number of uh, things we wanna bring you up to speed on. 
And the first is the Dickens Barn assessment. And if you'll remember on April 7th, after you heard the presentation by um, the 7-Eleven folks on their plan for preservation, I think you felt that the barn is an iconic structure and what can we do to preserve it? So you made a recommendation for them to go back and um, have their structural engineer look at it from more of a lens of how do we keep it standing? How do we keep it, uh, the barn preserved there? And not necessarily turn it into a commercial building that meets our current building codes, which as you remember, brought the price tag up uh, well above um, two and a half million, I believe, um, to preserve it. So, um, and then at the end of the meeting, uh, there was a call to staff to, again, reach out to some of the departments that would be involved in preserving the, the uh, barn. Um, and for us, that would be natural resources and then also parks and recreation. So uh, Jennifer and Brian and I did that. We did reach out to them. Um, and they also, um, I think Brian uh, brought out Carol, or no, I, I'm sorry, it was, um, it was Dave, David Bell, David Bell from uh, Natural Resources. Has a good contact with Boulder County and that's Carol Beam, who's uh, one of their preservationists on uh, staff. They went out and took a look at the barn um, and there was kind of a changing of uh, thought. So we think there might be an opportunity where um, the town, uh, the city could take ownership and be the stewards of the barn. It's, we're still kind of in the infinite stage, but because of that, we thought, well, maybe we should reach out to a structural engineer that we have on contract um, that has worked with some historic structures here in town to kind of get that other look because that's the first question David Bell asked is what's it going to cost? So um, we've done that and we've uh, prepared uh, uh, Gus Escobar from um, actually is housed in downtown um, Longmont. He prepared kind of a quick walkthrough with some um, ideas as far as where the, the structure is from a structural standpoint. Um, and I think it was pretty positive. So um, we have that and Gus isn't uh, here tonight, but if you have you know, specific questions, we'll bring that back to him. Um, but it's, it's certainly within the realm of possibility. So from that, we are also gonna meet with Parks and Rec to see if they have possibly a use for the structure. Wouldn't be for public use, but if they can store equipment in it, um, much like its historic purpose um, for maintenance of the um, park across the street, for a sandstone park across the street. Uh, then we have a use for it and it certainly makes um, more sense. So we're gonna continue those discussions um, and certainly if it looks better, we'll probably have uh, Gus go into a little bit more detail as far as some of the things he couldn't see um, just through his walkthrough and, and analysis. So um, that's kind of where we are, um, and we will keep you updated. The uh, applicants have submitted their plans for development, so they're in the development review process. It, it does take a while, um, but we do feel like we should, we need to move this forward from, from their standpoint as well. So um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you, or we can pass on questions to Gus and get back to you as, to you as well. Okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There was one other thing that I did want to get your input. So one of the next steps would be perhaps pr making a presentation to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. They're the ones that kind of look at uh, utilizing funds for various things. So I thought uh, Mr. Chairman or somebody else could maybe join staff when we get that scheduled. I think that would that would really be helpful as well. Sure. Yep. I'd be happy to do that. And I don't, we probably don't want the whole board down there um, that turns into a public hearing, but if there's another commissioner that would uh, be excited about that, then I think that would be a welcome. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's, that's great to hear. This is much more in line with the, with my thinking, at least in terms of what 
might be required to stabilize. So yeah, I really appreciate that. So we do have some commissioners with questions. Uh, I'm gonna call on Commissioner Hardy's first. Uh, yeah, that's really exciting that the building may have some more life. Um, there was just one, one item in uh, uh, the Escobar report, and I'm trying to find it now, but it referred to um, putting plywood on the inside of the exterior walls for lateral bracing. And I just wonder if maybe he would also look at um, threaded rods and turnbuckles that could keep the appearance of the inside of the barn intact, but provide that kind of bracing in a gentler fashion. It would run through the building? Well, the they roads. would be cross bracing, and, and then you can cinch those up with the turnbuckles. Mm -hmm. uh, okay you know, to help get the, the building plumb and, and and it stays in place as lateral bracing. Okay. And that might work instead of the plywood being it, throughout the It can, the for sure. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Commissioner Jacoby. Uh, yeah. Uh, I echo your, your thoughts, Lee. It's, it's wonderful to hear that we might be moving forward and preserving the barn. I, it might be premature at this point, but I'm curious, are there plans to make it the exterior space available to the public, or will it be more just uh, preserved and used for maintenance for the, the parks department? Are we going to have signs out in front talking about the history of the, the homestead or is it just going to be mostly for storage and we're going to maintain it as a city if we move forward with this? I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Well, I think we talked about uh, perhaps some interpretive signage that's on the trail um, that's close to the barn. Um, but we've really only talked about because we're really not going to be able to bring it up to code that we just try and keep at least the inside right. for storage purposes right. mainly. Um, hopefully we don't have to put a fence around it. I, I, would hope we would need to do that, um, but um, I think that's about it at this point. We haven't really delved a lot in a lot of depth. Okay. Into it yet. I'd like to point out just of the all the photos of the barn that we have, almost all the doors and windows are open, and the current owners are concerned about vagrants in there, and uh, that that's almost tantamount to demolition by neglect right there. If if the barn were to have a fire or something. And it'd be nice if they could close it up, but that's again up to them. Um, and but yeah, I, I, I'd offer to go talk to Parks and Rec too about the history of the the homestead, if if you would like. But um, all right, thank you. Yeah. Any other commissioner comments, questions? Um, I, I do have a question about the application moving forward. So. When they came back to us last time, there were a number of proposals for, you know, various features, signage, a video inside the store, you know, this some hint of the buildings that were um, that will, would be demolished. What, if any, of those are currently included in the application as it stands? Well, you haven't uh, made a final recommendation on it yet, so they do have to return to you. So okay. I would think some of those elements would still be part of the plan. Okay, so um, that's still an opportunity. We still have an opportunity to, to respond to that application. It's right. not moving forward ab absent this commission's. No, that, that's okay. something they would still have to complete before they could, yeah, get final approval. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Well, that's that's very good news, and I appreciate your efforts on behalf of uh, the town side. And, and I want to I want to call out the commission for being stout and <laughs> holding ground. Um, so this is a, it's a real positive. So I think when uh, staff was out there was when we were um, experiencing 90 to. Uh, 90 mile an hour winds through the area. <laughs> so I got to hand it to them. They showed a lot of uh, temerity to get out there. And yeah, trust me. Uh, you know, I was sitting inside the barn or standing inside the barn when the wind was howling, and uh, I felt relatively safe. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was one sheet of 
plywood I opted not to stand under. But, uh, That's, that was just at the opening, though, so that wasn't yeah. Yeah, <laughs> probably wise. But as, as I think even uh, Gus Escobar mentioned, it, it's been there this long, right? It's not the first 90-mile-an-hour yeah. wind that that building has seen. So, right. yeah, great. Well, that's, that's excellent. Thank you. Sure. All right. Okay. Uh, and this is not a public uh, hearing, so we don't have any public comment about this particular item. All right. Um, all right, so on to prior business. Uh, updates on uh, first, you know, I guess 8A would be the uh, HBC code amendments. Yes, um, I'd like to give you an update on that. We are getting close. Um, we've uh, talked to, as we mentioned, we've hired outside counsel to help us put together the draft. Um, and I think we mentioned to you kind of our first step would be discussing with city council some of the um, policy issues and some of the legal issues um, that are coming up with the code. So that has been scheduled um, with council this month. And then we're going to return to the, and basically re, um, repeat that process with the HBC. So um, your next meeting is July 7th. Um, I'm remembering that a couple on their team might have had an issue with July 7th, but I thought while we've got you here, is July 7th, is that going to work? That's the 4th of July week. Um, and if not, potentially the 14th, which would be one week later, I think we can have a special meeting um, in order to get everybody in, in one place and have that meeting. And well, for, there, well, there might be a conflict yeah. with the 14th and the meeting oh. in here. I think there's another board meeting on the 14th. How dare so. they. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we might have to look at some different options if the 7th doesn't work. Yeah, right. we did review as a board uh, the calendar at the beginning of the year and decided, I don't r recall moving this one because we didn't. It, because it's our natural first Thursday, but it did, no one objected to the, okay, to the date, so. All right. Um, so, it would be really great if, if we if could we somehow could make that work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and just to clarify, this is the, in, in part, um, reviewing the demolition ordinance that we've had um, out there for some time. So that's, that's right. exactly what we're talking about. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 And to clarify, because of the legal issues, um, the, the discussion with council and subsequently with you will be in an executive session. So it will be semi-private um, in order to kind of talk through the legal issues and our options. So that's kind of the first step. Now, one of the other questions is typically adoption of an amendment to the Land Development Code would also go to Planning Commission. Um, we're looking at options on that, so then we may follow up with a work session with City Council, a work session with the Historic Preservation Commission, and potentially um, the Planning Commission so that everybody's kind of on the same page. So it looks like uh, that's how we're spending our summer, <laughs> <laughs> is talking about the Historic Preservation Code. But it's, it's certainly worth it. Um, but we'll finalize what that schedule is going to look like in the right. weeks to come. Great. Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments regarding the code amendment is there schedule? No? OK. Great. Thank you. You bet. Uh, so then uh, 8B would be an update on the historic preservation plan. Yeah, so that's going to be me. So I'm going to be <laughs> fairly brief. Um, so last month, the commission looked at several examples from surrounding communities, Boulder, Louisville, and Lafayette, about their preservation plans that they currently have in place. Uh, I got the sense that the uh, the general thought was that the uh, least of those three examples anyway that Louisville was probably the preferred example um, just in terms of format and how it's how it was presented and so staff reached out to staff at Louisville just to get some background information regarding that we also got copies of their request for proposal mm -hmm. and also the contract that they put together for putting together their, uh, their preservation plan. Um, and so staff, our staff, has been talking about that um, and, and putting together a scope of work for a preservation plan. Uh, we're also exploring different funding 
options for the preservation plan, whether that would involve um, a potential grant application and or if we have the ability to fund that uh, ourselves uh, without a grant application. So we're continuing to explore that. Um, if, if the timing is right um, and you know, we can reach out and, and go through our, our purchasing process, and we have funding available. Uh, there, there might be the possibility that we do the, you know, the the plan ourselves without a grant application. We'll see how that kind of works out. Staff still having that conversation, and we're going to meet with our purchasing, contracting staff as well, uh, about that um, that process. So we'll keep you posted on that end. Um, and then also, um, and I don't know if you have any specific questions about that. One thing I would perhaps like to do is maybe reach out to History Colorado staff and see if they have any suggestions or recommendations of, uh, you know, professional or, uh, professionals that do th these types of uh, plans and see if they have any, uh, uh, any recommendations for staff to reach out to. These new mics are wild. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm happy to help set up a meeting or facilitate the conversation whenever you're ready. Okay, so, that would be great. Um, and you. if staff moves forward on their own without getting outside vendors to write it, um, I don't know if we can do this, but I would volunteer to help with whatever that looks like. Yeah, no, okay. we're not going to do it ourselves. Okay, then I no. misunderstood, Brian. <laughs> no, we would, we would contract out for a consultant to do, professional consultant to do the plan. We would not okay. do the plan on, on our own. <laughs> we would do something that somebody that's actually qualified to do a plan. Like yeah. <laughs> but, but but you might help with an RFP, perhaps. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, obviously, staff is limited in their capacity to put together. You know, we, it'd probably take us ten years to put together a plan like this. But. <laughs> Sorry for the misunderstanding. Yes, I'll volunteer to help out with any aspect of that. I appreciate so. that. Yeah, and then, like I said, we can share, uh, like I said, the information I got from Louisville in terms of their RFP, their scope of work, the contract that they got, the consultant that they worked with. Uh, it seemed pretty reasonable. I, I mean, obviously, this was 2015, and I, I think the contract at that time was less than $25,000. So we're going to see what options there are and opportunities we have with our, our purchasing process that we have with the city as well in terms of what, what those requirements are. And then kind of related to that is that uh, last month's meeting, we also talked about some grant opportunities, uh, particularly some of the, uh, the rolling grant opportunities. And one, one in particular we talked about was survey grant, mm -hmm. which is a rolling uh, continuous grant application. It's a non-competitive grant application that's uh, potentially up to $15,000. And I think there's a 10% city match for that and you know that's an opportunity to, for the city to look more comprehensively in terms of what their priorities are for survey work in the community what's been done to date what additional survey work that the community what their priorities are for survey work um, and so that's something that I think we want to undertake as well um, is is uh, looking at and we might want to reach out to history Colorado staff <laughs> as well and get some examples of those applications that have done been done uh, in the past regarding these types of uh, uh, survey uh, projects uh, and the grant applications. And so I think we'd like to pursue, pursue that as well in addition to the preservation plan. So right. I don't know if the, yeah. the commission has any questions about that as well. So we'll be working on kind of scopes for, for both of those aspects. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, any commissioners have any questions, comments? No, all right, yeah, thank you. That's Perfect. I was going to ask about the, the survey grant, so I appreciate you bringing that up. Sure. Yeah. I was going to ask a question. Our last RFP, it was for something completely different. It was for a housing analysis, but we had nobody respond because everybody was maxed out and hard to, to fill positions. And I don't know if it's that way in this world. Um, I'm hoping there's capacity out there, but is that what you're seeing, Commissioner Holly? I mean, is there... We're also having trouble filling positions. Um, I think there's less issues with capacity with contracting with outside vendors. Okay. Um, but people, people are busy. People are at 
at max. Um, yeah. I don't know what to tell you about that, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope for our best. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we, we've had to repost things a couple of times when we've been looking mm. for vendors and staff, so. Um, but yeah, we're, I'm, again, I'm happy to set up one meeting or multiple meetings with all the correct staff members who can answer these questions for you guys and even point you towards possible folks. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. that'd be great. That'd be super. Okay. And see, you know, we could reach out to potential contractors and see what, you know, see what their schedules are like, how far out they're scheduling and yeah. what, what options might be available. All right. That'd be great. I think the, the RFP that, when you were referring to was one that the city's going to reissue based right. on timing, and that mm -hmm. was one of the the hiccups. And so, if we can, yeah, if we can communicate with, a, I'm sure. I mean, this is a very small pool of consultants yeah. that are going to provide preservation plans, right? So, <laughs> yeah, understanding how best to frame that to get the biggest draw would probably be. Did you guys have a cost attached to it? Or you do need the mic because. Was it was it a cost issue? Do you think like or was it open ended and so it was like a, a full RFP? Yeah, we uh, were able to reach out to the people who picked up the RFP and didn't turn it in and and asked them what yeah. was the issue and it was all about timing. Okay. Um, and okay. it was partly because Dola allowed uh, let all this money out at one time, so we were competing with every city I think in Colorado. Yeah, that. we're so, having problems with that too. <laughs> yeah. We love the money, but yeah. Well, and there's short time frames. Um, so a lot of that is due to those COVID funds and those, those will be used up within the next um, like state fiscal-ish. Yeah. Um, and so maybe, <laughs> maybe next summer will uh, we'll be easier. Yeah. Okay. Not that we want to wait that long. Right, right. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see, Commissioner Hardy's. Yes, I just uh, wanted to uh, mention that I assume the, the city uses uh, BidNet or one of the other. Uh, mm -hmm. And the RFPs that I've put responses together and gone to initial meetings for projects in recent months have all been really well attended. So, I mean, there are people who are still looking for, for the work. And it may be that you need to go outside the area looking for consultants, mm. um, you know, you know, with Kansas or New Mexico or some other, you know, surrounding state, uh, they may be more inclined. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Commissioner Goon. I, I just wanted to clarify, I did have to look up what RFP was, so <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not in on the lingo. <laughs> and so maybe for the public, it's a request uh, for proposal, right? Right. Request. Okay. So if it's an Thank RFP, you. it's a request for proposal. If it's an RFQ, it's a request request for qualification. Oh, thank you. Just okay. So now I appreciate you're, that. Yeah. yeah no. You bet. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. We yeah. get stuck in the lingo. I know. There are so many acronyms in the planning and world. Yes. All right. Uh, great. Well, that's also good news. This is a very, um, a lot of positive, positive energy here today. Uh, any other comments, questions from commissioners? No? All right. Thank you. Appreciate all the updates. Um, we will go then, a uh, fairly quick meeting then, on to uh, comments from HPC commissioners. Anybody have a comment or statement they'd like to make? Okay. Commissioner Goon. I'm just excited about that barn and what this what's been accomplished with that and even breaking it apart from the, the project or the potential breaking it apart so that the city is showing that it cares about what can happen with that property. So that's just that's really good news. Thank you. Commissioner Norton, sorry, just trying to get myself organized. Um, I'm just going to echo Commissioner Goon. Um, thank you guys so much for um, how responsive you've been over the last several months. I I know that 
it was, I felt like it was hard for us as a commission to get our, our feet under us, especially during COVID. And I think there was lots of reasons for that. Um, but you've really done a great job in addressing our concerns in these meetings. And I think the Dickens Barn is a really good example of that. And I really appreciate going back and taking a third look. <laughs> um, and I appreciate moving forward with the amendments in the historic preservation plan. So thank you so much to all the staff for all your hard work. Commissioner Hardy's. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add, I forgot to mention earlier that I'd also be very interested in volunteering help if you know you're putting together a request for proposal or or scope of work. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of experience trying to deal with those from the other end, and I'd be happy to to help look at that when the time comes. Okay. All right, great. Um, seeing no others in the queue, uh, we'll move on to comments from city council representative. And unfortunately, our council representative is not here, so um, I won't have any comments from Councilman Rodriguez, uh, which moves us to adjournment, which might be one of the fastest meetings we've had in a while, but that's okay, I guess. <laughs> It is faster when we don't have to wait for five minutes every time there's, you know, potential for public comment. That's certainly true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, do I have a motion? Oh, let's see. Uh, Commissioner Sibley. I motion to adjourn. All right. Do I have a second? Mike or otherwise? All right, yeah. motion, motion from Commissioner Sibley and a second by Commissioner Hardy's. All in favor of adjournment, please raise your hand. Very well, we are adjourned. Thank you. Good night.